I want to thank Birch Living for sponsoring this video. Are you looking for a fast and easy project? Do you have bags of scraps? Are you looking for an easier way to quilt? In this quilting tutorial, we are diving into another quilt as you go method to make beautiful quilts with our scraps. And I will be sharing my top tips and tricks. This is an important method that every quilter should know. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please click that subscribe button. Quilt as you go techniques are all about making the assembly of your quilt manageable on your domestic sewing machine. Not only does it make managing the bulk of your quilt easier, eliminating all the aches and pains of managing a big quilt sandwich, it also allows you to use up your batting scraps and sometimes even your fabric scraps. There are many different methods for quilt as you go, and this is number two in a series. Today we are using the strip and flip method along with a scrappy braid block. In this video, I will be making a cuddle quilt at 36 inches by 42 inches. And at the end, I will have a free handout for the twin, queen, and king size. Your cutting mat will be an important tool in this method, so take a moment to clean it before we start. And you'll need a sharp blade in your rotary cutter, so if you can't remember the last time you changed your blade, change it now. For the braid block, you'll need some scrappy strips. This is a great place to use up those thin strips that accumulate with every project. As I process my scraps, I dump all my strips less than two and a half inches into this bin here. And if you have them, you can use any leftover jelly roll strips or binding strips too. You can also use an assortment of colors, but today I am just pulling out the greens. You will also need some fabric for in between the braids. Because the braid is scrappy with all sorts of colors, values, and patterns, a solid fabric or a tone-on-tone -tone fabric works best here. For this quilt, you will need three strips, four and a half inches by 42. So those long leftover strips from backing will work well here. Today, I'm using a half yard cut that I found in my stash. Honestly, I didn't even know it was there, but it is perfect as it has just a touch of green that will make it work for this project. And you'll also need strips of fabric for the back of the quilt. You need two strips 13 inches wide by 44 inches long and three strips 5 inches wide by 44 inches long. You can use all the same fabric or a variety of fabrics. I am using another piece of yardage that I found in my stash. And finally, you also need some batting strips, which you most likely have in your scrap bin. They're the same size as your backing. Two strips 13 by 44 and three strips 5 inches by 44. It is important that you use just one type of batting per project as different batting shrinks at different rates. Now, whether you use your scraps or you use your fabric from your stash, you can see that this is going to be a great project to get your fabric out of your sewing room and into a quilt. The block starts with a charm square. Find either a middle vertical line or a thicker line on your cutting mat and lay down the square on point. That is with the top and bottom corner on this line. If you draw a line across the other two corners, it should be perpendicular to the vertical line, and we will call this your baseline. Then choose two scraps. They need to be similar in width, and when we lay them down on each side of the charm square, they need to extend over that baseline on both sides. So one to the left, then one to the right, and repeat with pairs of strips. Here are some tips you need to make this block work. Vary the thickness of your strips. Though the pairs of strips that you are adding need to be the same thickness, they can be wider or narrower than the previous pair. And chances are your scrap pile is full of strips of different widths. You can piece your strip pairs. If your strips are not long enough or thick enough, don't hesitate to sew two or more together to get what you need. 
aim for as much contrast as possible to highlight the plating in the braid. You can contrast with value, pattern, width, and color, and any combination of these. But the more contrast, the better the effect. Square up often. You want your braid to run straight. So after you sew on two sides, align the charm square back on that vertical line. Then you take your ruler and lay it down so the edge touches the corner and the intersection of the seams. The top of the strip should also lie on that vertical line. If the tip lies to the left of the line, it means that you need to add a narrow strip to the right side of the braid. If the tip lies to the right of the line, it means you need to add to the left side of the braid. You could also choose to trim the thicker side. Personally, I square up every third row. With my big 15 inch ruler, I align the rules diagonal with my map and trim both sides. For this project, the braids are made 12 and a half inches wide to finish at 12 inches wide. And so that you don't have to measure it with your ruler every time, just mark your cutting mat with a piece of masking tape. Then when you trim up, you just align your ruler to the masking tape. Cutting it a bit bigger will give you some wiggle room. And there are a couple of reasons for this. Working with diagonals is tricky and what looks like it fits can be short after you sew the strip on. And the edges of this block are on the bias. So it's easily stretched this way and that. Find it easier to trim your block one inch larger than it needs to be as you are growing your block. Then you can trim it down at the end, giving you a nice clean edge. You can use every color of scrap in your bucket, but if you want to control the chaos a bit, limit yourself to one or two colors, or go from dark to lights, or rainbow the colors. Just have fun. Eventually, as you make this, you are going to run out of cutting mat. When that happens, use chalk or a marking pen to draw the center line up the braid. Trim the bottom square. Then mark your braid at the 10 inch or 15 inch or another easy number to calculate with. Then shift the whole strip down until the marks are on the edge of the cutting mat. Fold the tail on top to prevent stretching. Then continue to add strips and square up using the chalk line centered on your vertical line. When you get to the length of block that you want, and here we need 42 inches, you can end the strip two ways. You can just add to the sides and trim up. Or you can add a half square triangle to the corner and make an arrow point. For this quilt, we need two braids. So before we get to the next step, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Birch Living, and the mattress that's on my bed. Birch Living is a mattress in a box company that makes mattresses that are fiberglass free and crafted with organic and natural materials that have been sustainably sourced. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up yourself. The mattress has over 1,000 individually wrapped steel coils to cradle your body and limit motion transfer. Their non-toxic mattresses are made right here in North America, crafted with eight different layers of organic cashmere, organic wool, organic cotton, and 100% natural latex. This is important to me as those organic materials help keep me cool and regulate my body temperature while I sleep. And my mattress is not releasing dangerous emissions because it's guaranteed free of harmful chemicals. Birch mattresses are Green Guard Gold certified. This means the mattresses are independently verified to be organic, ethically produced from beginning to end, and free of any polyurethane-based foams and harsh, unnecessary chemicals and pollutants. I've had mine for almost two years now, and I liked it so much, I gave one to my sister and one to my parents. So we are all sleeping better this year. Ordering online can be nerve-wracking, so Birch has a 100-night sleep trial plus a 25-year warranty. Delivery is free to your door within the U.S. With every order, you'll also receive two Birch EcoRest pillows made from recycled plastic bottles. They're breathable and better for the environment. I love my Birch mattress, and I think that you will too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Birch Living. If you click on my link below, birchliving.com slash quilts, you'll receive 20% off your first order, plus two free EcoWest pillows. 
This quilt needs three four and a half by 42 inch long straight strips between the braid. And I am going to show you how to cut long strips of fabric, keeping them square. That is no more peaks and valleys. The real trick is to keep the fold of the fabric parallel to the lines on your cutting mat. And this is fairly straightforward for width of fabric strips. Align the fold on the horizontal line. Square up your ruler with the fold and cut perpendicular to that. Don't worry about the selvages. They might be a bit crooked, but that doesn't matter. Just focus on keeping your ruler in place. Now, what if you have to cut longer strips for the twin size? Fold the fabric in half on your cutting table. Use your ruler in the fold to make it sharp. Then place another ruler on your cutting mat aligned to one of the horizontal lines. Fold your fabric over the second ruler. When both rulers are aligned to a horizontal line on your mat, secure your fabric with weights or magnets. Then make your vertical cut using a nice sharp blade in your largest rotary cutter. Because your folds were perpendicular to the cut line, you should have a nice straight length of fabric. This method will also work with an additional fold in your fabric. As long as your fabric is secure and your blade is sharp, you will make a straight line every time. So grab your braids and your in-between strips and your backing strips and your batting and lay them out in sets. Then pin the sets together to keep them organized. The stitch and flip method is about quilting one strip at a time. So we're going to make a quilt sandwich with the outside strip first. You can use pins to base or fusible batting, but I find the easiest way to baste with this method is by using Free Fuse by Quilter Select. This is a semi-permanent fusible powder and we sprinkle it on the back like a salt shaker, then layer on the batting and sprinkle on another layer then cover that with the top piece. Then take a hot iron and press all along the strip, keeping it straight. Little grains of the glue can end up on your pressing mat or quilt top, so I like to use a piece of parchment paper while I press. You will need to give it a good press both on the top and the bottom. Now put your walking foot on your sewing machine. I like to use a size 90 quilting needle and a 2.5 or larger stitch. Make sure you have plenty of thread in the bobbin and align the edge of the foot with the outside edge of your fabric and quilt straight lines at half inch intervals. Now trim your strip to four and a half inches. Now we're going to get to the meat of this technique. Grab one of your braid sets. Take the backing strip and lay it on your cutting table right side up. Then take your quilted strip and align the edges right side up. Then lay your braided strip on top, wrong side up, and align the edges. Pin along the edge. Then we're going to sew them all together with a quarter inch seam. Finger press the seams up, then press with a hot iron. Lay the strip down with the back up and the braid fold it down. Sprinkle the free fuse along the back. Grab the batting strip and tuck the straight edge along the seam. Then sprinkle the free fuse on the batting strip. Then fold the braid up and press along the whole strip. At the sewing machine, align the seam to the edge of the walking foot. Quilt straight lines at a half an inch. Continue until the whole braid is covered, then trim the strip at 12 and a quarter inches. Now grab another in-between set. Place the backing strip right side up on the table, then the quilted piece right side up, then the top strip wrong side up. Align and pin the edges together and sew this together at a quarter inch. Finger press the seam up, then press with a hot iron, fold the trim down, then sprinkle the free fuse along the backing, then tuck the backing strip along the seam, then sprinkle the free fuse along the batting, fold up the trim, and press all along the strip. Align the walking foot to the seam, and continue to straight line quilt at a half inch intervals. Then repeat with the next braid, and finally, with the last piece of trim. And the beauty of the quilt-as-you-go method 
is that when you have finished your last piece, you are almost done. You just need to square up, make your label, and bind it. I am sure that there are many of you out there that have done row by row quilts or challenges, and you can see how this strip and flip method would be the best way to quilt them on your domestic sewing machine. It would also work well for any quilt that you assemble in the row by row method, whether that be vertically, horizontally, or a combination of the two. But chances are there is going to be a moment in your quilting journey when you find out the quilt that you have made has turned out too small. Or maybe a loved one has moved to a larger bed. Or maybe it shrunk too much in the wash. You can use this method to add as many borders as you need to get the size you need. Or maybe a recipient has gone through a growth spurt. You can use this method just to add more length to the bottom. I have personally done this twice, and the look of happiness on the recipient's face is worth all the effort. So, are you going to give this method a try? You can download the dimension sheet for this quilt on my website, as well as one for a twin, full, queen, and king size quilt. Now, if you missed the other videos in this series, I will leave a link to them right here. And if you need some other ideas for your scraps, I'm going to leave a link to that playlist too. Take care and I'll see you next time.